Um, so just to get started, uh, welcome to Wednesday night at Living Word Family Church. Um, my class is These Final Days Ministries. I'm Pastor Ryan Speakman, uh, serving under my favorite pastor in the whole world, Pastor Breen Collins. Yeah. 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 Pastor. And actually, uh, very quick before we start, I want to welcome a couple of uh, special guests here tonight. You're all special. But um, I'd like to welcome uh, Pastor Bybee, who's visiting from the Presbyterian Church. Go and wave, David. Yeah, hey. another David. <laughs> and uh, Pastor Bybee um, is very good friends with Noam and Adit. Have you met David in person? Oh, yes, we, we talked at the... Oh, David, you know David, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, you remember, do you remember David? He's been to your house or something, I, I don't know. Okay, and, then, uh, and I, also wanna, I also wanna welcome uh, Stan and Andrea. Uh, Stan is the, are you the president of the synagogue? How'd you get that one? How'd you get one? I, I didn't step back. <laughs> I really probably got to step back. So Stan, Stan is the president of our local synagogue. Andrea is his lovely wife, and they're here to see you as well. And then finally, I want to welcome Pastor Ted Mattia, because I never thought I'd see him in my classroom ever. <laughs> and his lovely wife, Susie, and everybody else. Uh, David, why don't you um, go ahead? Well, he said, these are auspicious, these are auspicious times for Israel. Yes. Um, David, what, what, I think that, why don't you uh, introduce yourself before you get started? Sure. Please. Sure, my name is David Bedeen, and I grew up in the West Bank settlement of Philadelphia, it's on the west bank of the Delaware River, and uh, I've been here in Israel for 49 years, uh, so I speak some English, and uh, I run a news agency and research center that provides work on what happens here in Israel, called IsraelBehindTheNews.com, if any of you have, have uh, smartphones or dumb phones, you want to look at it, you can stay, see it very, very easily, you'll see what we do. Our job is to keep people informed. We use the expression, let my people know. Mm -hmm. The assumption in the world of the politically correct media is that no one has any idea what's going on here in Israel. Therefore, our job is to give you the insight. Our focus, um, more than anything else, is on education. And uh, the, the weapon that the other side uses is education for war. And we have translated, we commissioned the translations of all the new school books used by the Palestinian Authority, uh, which have just, just been put into circulation. We were the first ones to get them when the new ones came out in 2000, the newest in 2000. They've been updated ever since, since 2000 to 2019. Uh, at the time, I had met with Yasser Arafat, the head of the PLO, and um, he wasn't happy with me, but he had no choice but to meet with me. And uh, because I always pointed out what he said in the Arabic language, so I asked Mr. Arafat, when are you going to come out with words of peace in the Arabic language? He said, you must see my new school books. Well, that was his problem that he said it. And we followed it up. Now, can you all hear me OK? Yes. yes. Yeah, you sound good. So we got the new school books. And we also uh, had meetings with the diplomats from uh, 19 countries that funded the school books. We started asking a lot of questions, very serious questions. Now, this brings us to what's going on now. Right now, the United States government is about to suggest a major plan for Israel. However, that plan doesn't have anything to do with education. Therefore, it's a disaster. And why am I saying that? When you go onto my, my um, website, IsraelBehindTheNews.com, you have in Palestinian school books, you'll see, you'll, you'll see the uh, pre of 365 school books that we translated. We tried to find one which advocated peace or reconciliation, not one. Instead, I'm going to show you an uh, example of a school book. Uh, perhaps you can see a lady here with a, a, a Arab Palestinian flag flowing under her, under her, and you see an ocean. You see her okay? Yes. Right. Yes. Now, what's important here, she's presented five times in the new school books as the model for all Palestinian children. Her name is Dalal Mugrave. She's famous, or infamous, because in March 1978, uh, she landed a dingy of, of terrorists north of Tel Aviv. As she landed, she murdered a, uh, a, a photographer, a woman named Gail Rubin, the niece of Senator Ribicon, happened to be taking pictures of her. And, and she commandeered a bus 
uh, and murdered 38 people, including 13 children. And what this lesson plan shows is how every Arab child has to grow up and be like her. She's the role model presented in Palestinian education. Hmm. The new plan of the century that, that President Trump is presenting ignores education, ignores these school books, keeps these school books in, in ta- intact, and allows the PLO, the Palestine Liberation Organization, to continue running the ballgame. Therefore, it is a disaster. Now, it's a disaster, <coughs> not a catastrophe. What's the difference between a catastrophe and a disaster? When you have a disaster, you call in relief. You bring in boats, you, you, you put in people, uh, Red Cross, whatever. A catastrophe, you can't do anything about it. But a disaster is something you can save, save people from. That's why I'm speaking to you this evening, or this morning, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm talking to you because if 25 people in this room, 25 people, if any of you, if, if you were to contact uh, Sandra, uh, um, Sarah Sanders, uh, who is the Huckabee. White House Secretary, right? The, the, she happens to be the daughter of a wonderful man named Mike Huckabee. Yeah, and we you love say him. to her in her personal letters that you hope that any plan that President Trump offers would relate to education. And that's the feedback we need to get from you to the White House. That, is, that a, a, a peace process without education is not worth anything. But we need your feedback. Because most people who, are, who, are, who love Israel are hesitant to stand up and say, excuse me, but not under any condition. We can't support them under any condition. When you have a school book like that, what you see, you have two little children. This is a this is a, um, a literature book. It looks innocuous completely. We purchased all of them. We purchased all of the school books. That's what Arafat asked us to do. We keep doing it. And they get worse by the year. But they get more ignored by the year by everybody. There's not one item with not one Jewish newspaper from the United States written on features about it. Not one. Now, we've had a little bit of success with something called the JNS, the Jewish News Service, a little bit, but they've, they've uh, run a few features about, about our concerns. But what we need is your feedback. And I, I, I stress the last time we spoke several months ago, when, I, when you had me as your guest, uh, Pastor Brian, that one of my closest friends who works in the U.S. Congress and is now retiring, I said, well, how does Congress work? Remember what the answer was, uh, Pastor Ryan? Um, it doesn't work. I don't know. No, we, we, no, I remember that we, we don't send a, uh, uh, like a long list of, uh, signatures. We send individual oh, that's letters. That's right. Oh, yeah. what he said. The one, his, my friend who's retiring from Congress after 42 years on the House Foreign Relations Committee as a staff person, he says, the way it works with us is we get 10 letters, 10. Right. 10 letters about anything. We go into a tizzy. Ten personal letters. That's how Congress operates. Yeah, not, not I have the same thing letters. in the Canadian Parliament and the British Parliament and even in the Israeli Knesset Parliament. I got the same response. So your individual response. Now, people can say, oh, you made this stuff up. You say, do a little bit of homework. I don't ask you to come on to the Palestinian Authority school book store. Coincidentally, when I first met the Palestinian Minister of Education, he said, what are you going to do with these books? I said, we're going to translate them. And he said, will you give it publicity? I said, of course I will. He didn't know what I meant. I knew what I meant. Right. And what I'm saying to you is, when we say to you to look at this material objectively and be shocked that it's the first curriculum ever to indoctrinate children to murder Jews. Right. Now, you may say, what about not the Nazis? Well, we had these school books compared to the Nazi school education system. There is no comparison. The Nazis never promoted the murder of Jews. They did the murder of Jews, don't get me wrong. Of course they did. But there was no call, no picture of someone who had carried out a murder in a school book, by the way, in, in, in the Nazi school book. Yeah, there the, was the no, Nazis tried to hide it. And uh, Square's name for people who murdered Jews. There were no movies about people. They just, it was implicit. Here it's explicit. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to speak to you tonight to, to overcome the hurdles of political, the political establishments of the Jews and the Christians in the United States who will not hold forums on the subject. Yeah. Who will not hold forums on the subject. I emphasize this. So, so do you, it's too true to 
to be un- to, 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 to deal with. So That's Dave, why David, I'm circumventing everything, oh. speaking with you directly, and hoping that your feedback, uh, you begin with your Congress people in Arizona, and you write direct letters with a, you know, with a stamp and a letter. I think when my daughter, with her bat mitzvah, she wanted to have, this, have a, well, I wanted to get her a stamp collection. She said, what's a stamp? So that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, and right. people want to have stamps in it. But you get to, you get to go, you <laughs> and you put it out, and you express your, your head, you do a little homework, make a short and sweet letter, that's what you have to do. David, can, David can you hear me? David. Uh, so, so we're um, talking about the, the Trump Kushner peace plan, right? The right. deal of the century. So, uh, what I've read online is that uh, right now is the month of Ramadan, right? The, the Muslim Holy Month that started last Sunday. So that ends on Tuesday, <laughs> June fourth. And what it sounds like is that they're going to um, uh, unveil this plan uh, shortly after June fourth, which means it's coming up in, in a couple of weeks. So, um, you know, one concern would be, you know. Uh, we've all written letters before to, to Congress. I'm not sure if everyone in, in here has, but I know that I have and a few other people at least. And you've been at this for, for decades, right? You've spoken before the U.S. Congress, the United Nations, uh, trying to influence. You met with uh, Trump's um, campaign team uh, uh, right before he got elected. His um, transition team, yes. Or transition team, I'm sorry, yeah, after he got elected, right. And uh, so, you know, at this point, um, my, my, I wonder if, the, if this deal isn't, you know, kind of set in stone. and. What, one thing that concerns me is uh, just yesterday an article came out, and I don't even know if you've seen it yet, I, I'll send it to you, but I just saw it today as a matter of fact. Um, but, but what the story is, are you familiar with uh, Yisrael uh, Hayom? I think yes, it's a publication. Of okay, okay. He's, he says, of course, I never heard of it before today. That means uh, Israel the day or something like that, right? But, um, but uh, they say that a document uh, was just leaked to them yesterday from uh, the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, about you know the details of the Trump Kushner plan, and uh, here's the thing that really jumped out. I mean, there's a lot of interesting details, but the thing that really jumps out is what the article says: if either Israel or the Palestinians, including Hamas and the PLO, right, uh, Gaza and the West Bank, reject the deal, the document says the U.S. will impose steep penalties, not just on the Palestinians. It says the U.S. will cut off all aid to Israel and ensure no country in the world transfers money to the Palestinians, whose economy, of course, is reliant on foreign donors. Have you, is it, have you heard this, or? Absolutely, I've seen, the, I've seen the document, and I can confirm from all my sources that the document is accurate. You've act, okay, and you've actually seen this. Okay. the document is what's not there. there. Here you have an education system, when, and by the way, the United States was the prime supporter of that education system, and President Trump has seen the school books, and he was shocked. I shared the school books with his transition team, and he was shocked to see what was there. It's not that they don't know it's there, they just ignore it. And the most egregious part of the, of the, of the, of the system is that it leaves the PLO, the Palestine Liberation Organization, in power. And that is the, that is the worst thing. The second worst thing, is that there's no mention of the five million Arabs who are in refugee camps since 1949, and they're there under the premise and promise of what they call the right of return. And they've updated their slogan to say right of return by force of arms. So you probably all know that there were missile attacks on Israel this week. Uh, yeah. But what doesn't get explained is why. Why were they firing? At Ashdod, Ashkelon, Be'er Sheva. These are Israeli cities which replaced Arab villages that were abandoned in 1948, 49, 50. And the Arabs, instead of being absorbed in Arab countries where there's lots of rules, have been in refugee camps where the children live in, or in schools. They sit where their, where their grandparents and great grandparents came from, from Be'er Sheva, yeah. Ashkelon, and uh, Ashdod. So there are separate celebrations in the UNRWA refugee camps this week when bombs fell on 600 missiles. 600 missiles yeah. fell down on these places. Of and, and di- didn't Ashton, Ashton. didn't uh, four is- Israeli citizens get killed this this time? That that's unusual. That's correct. Right. Yeah. So there were. That's correct. Right. 66 were, were injured, but but that's not the story. 
1.5 million people in Israel. That's a good. That's a high percentage of the of the population in Israel, which is now nine million. Right. 1.5 million were forced to hunker down in shelters. Mm. That's the problem. For several days, yeah. And this is where the the, the amount of people who were affected here was immense. Yeah. And that will not be affected when the education system is changed, and when Israel asserts itself with the support. Of its friends abroad. David, you started to say why uh, Hamas and Islamic Jihad decided right now to do this barrage of missiles. Why? They, they ultimately, when people attack, when countries attack, uh, in, 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 they feel that, they, that they're weak. In the Bible, we have the example of Amalek attacking the people of Israel at their weakest point. And that is one of the uh, Amalekites. System, the Amalekite model is what the PLO and the Islamic Jihad and Hamas all use. Attacking the weakest, weakest, weakest people in Israel with one purpose. That is a genocidal purpose. Right. And that is the gen genocidal purpose of the PLO. They are not looking, now unfortunately, the people on the other side try to say, oh, it's for our economic development and for our betterment. Now you'll see on our website, we've just put up a new film about the middle class Gaza. And I'm going to forward it to you, um, Ryan, Professor Ryan, so you can share it with your your uh, your church. Okay, great. Because it's a, it's a, a flowing middle class successful place. Oh, I've, I've seen it. But that's something they put up. Yeah, I've seen it. The, the, there's fancy cars in Gaza City. There's tuxedo yeah, shops and mansions and, and, up in the income. Crazy. Uh, comes from the, the the charitable funds that are stolen and used used to finance a middle class life. Well, it comes from me and everybody else in this room. It's U.S. tax Well, dollars. actually, less less so now than it used to be, thanks to the current yes, exactly. president. Yes, yeah. The Trump, current Trump is cut off. The nose of the current president is in the right direction. Absolutely. We have to keep that nose in that direction and to make sure that he understands. That, again, I compare President Trump. Akash Meros was about to issue a decree against the Jews. Esther stood up together with Mordecai and said, you know, and please don't, don't, don't carry out that. We kept that out. The ring is on. Take, don't, take, don't take the ring off your finger to enforce this edict. As Pastor Ryan has just said, we have them from now until June 4th and June 5th, which is very interesting. The anniversary of the Six Day War, Israel recovered Jerusalem, Judea, right. Samaria, and Gaza. The Temple and Mount. Yeah. But between now and then, you can ask President Trump to not issue his edict of his, of his plan because it's a disaster for Israel, a disaster for peace, and an embarrassment to God. But your voices, you have no idea how influential you can be. You have no idea. Because this is what, the, what policy. Policy makers do not pay attention as much to people who are from an official lobby or from someone who signs a long petition. They pay attention to people who, whose part is in the left. And that's what and that's, my friend retiring from Congress says. That's he says, when we get a letter, the 10 letters, we go into a tizzy because we know it's serious. Yeah, that, that's so interesting to me. Yeah, and I believe it. I believe it. Um, it works. So, so uh, Jared Kushner just last week was uh, speaking at a symposium, and uh, and he uh, made the comment. It was at the Washington Institute Solar Symposium, and uh, Kushner said uh, he, he basically he he refuses to use the term two-state solution because it's, he said it means one thing to the Israelis and a different thing to the Palestinians. So he's avoiding that. But but isn't that exactly what this plan is? I mean, I've been looking at the details. Well, it's it's what the PLO we coined the PLO for a purpose as a two-stage solution, a two-stage solution. And that's the basis of the PLO Covenant. The PLO was in Palestine, and I want you to look up these, you need to call it the PLO Covenant or the PLO Charter. Look it up on our website, israelbehindthenews.com, look in the, in, the, in the search the search engine. We had a, a full-scale Palestinian crew, Palestinian TV crew, at the Palestine National Council when they were supposed to cancel that covenant, and they never did. And so, because what's the covenant? We'll take a little bit at a time. The PLO favors 
the two-stage solution. Yeah, that was Arabic. Not the two-stage plan. solution. Yeah. There's no record of anywhere of any Arabic document coming out of the Palestinian Authority, and that's what we pay attention to. Where the PLO, the Palestine Liberation Organization, endorses two states living side by side. Yeah, it's, it's what they say in Arabic. The and by the way, the other, the other senator to be in touch with, extremely important, is Senator Romney. Senator Romney, of, uh, who's now from uh, Utah. Yeah, Mitt Romney. Who's the new chairman of the Near East Subcommittee of the United States Senate's Foreign Relations oh, Committee. I didn't know he that. is all powerful. Oh my gosh, wow. And you need, he, he, came, he came to Israel during Passover when our people were on vacation. We were celebrating, as you know, the Exodus and all that. Yeah. So no one was able, available to, to meet with him. So he said, all here was about the two state solution because he didn't talk to people who know what was going on. So again, personal letters to Senator Mitt Romney, Senator Mitt Romney, US, uh, the US Senate, uh, Washington, D.C., 20515. Dear Senator Romney, we, are, we hope that you will reconsider your support for a PLO state which makes no pretensions but recognizing Israel in any way, shape, or form, regardless of who you saw in Israel when you when you came to Israel when no one could meet with you. Well, Romney anyway. is Romney is Mormon, so I'm not sure if we can talk to him. But I'm joking. I'm joking. Never mind. He's a joke. Hey, David, um, can you can you explain for those who aren't really familiar with because we you, you know we've all talked about this before, but they, what you mean by um, two stage solution? Can you explain that a little bit further? Well, the, the concept, the, the the lie is that if you if First of all, what the PLO proposes will take a little bit of time and keep going. The lie is that if the PLO gets hold of the of the of Gaza, Jerusalem, West Bank, Golan, uh, some candy bars, everything will be fine. But that has nothing to do with reality, because they are never. You understand something? I even had the opportunity to interview Yasser Arafat, who was the head of the PLO back in 1996, and I live in in uh, Efrat in Judea. <laughs> also known as the West Bank, and he, I said, asked him a very simple question: What's our role in your state? He said, "You can stay where you are. You didn't take Arab land. You came to an area which was desolate. But if you had, if you, if you were from Ramla, Lod, or any of the other places that lost the forty-eight, you'd have to leave." Their concept is two states without any Jews. The person who who founded the uh, concept of of the two-state solution was Ho Chi Minh. Remember him? Oh yeah. Oh, South wow. and North Vietnam would both be communists. Hmm. That's all. That was the solution. Yeah, there'd be two states. But both be the first one, we'd have it north. Now we'll take the south. But that was he, that's, that's where it comes from. Well, now now you you know because I you know I showed you the video and stuff. But in 2014, I um, had the uh, amazing opportunity to interview the. Deputy Assistant Foreign Minister of the Palestinian Authority in Ramallah, and um, you remember what he said to me is that their position. Well, what, did he, what did he say? To you? <laughs> what their position is now is uh, two states won't work. Uh, they believe in a one-state solution, and of course, what he means by that is one state of Palestine. And here's the most interesting thing, and even my Christian Palestinian friends have said this: that um, that you know we're not against the Jews. You know we like the Jews. Uh, but we're going to have one state that's democratic where the government is comprised of the Palestinian Authority, Hamas, and, and the Jews. Can you see this working? Well, I'll like, tell you something. Starting in, 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 the, in the new school books, Pastor Ryan, in the new school books, this is on our site, and it's, it, you can see it very clearly. The children in, in the sixth grade are, are, are taught the following. What do we do with the Jews who are left after we establish our Arab state? And the answer is we exterminate them. Right, in the textbooks. We exterminate them, clearly stated. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. Right. Find me one Jewish person in the United States who knows that. Mm -hmm. The whole thing has been obfuscated from, from, from people because the people promoting what used to be called the Oslo process. Oslo in English is toilet, but that's okay. Uh, but uh, actually, toilet seat. The toilet seat process, which was promoted by the by by the uh, by people who wanted their kind of peace. Yeah, it was clean. The toilet seat process. It, it, we requested, don't look at what they say in Arabic. It will, as a matter of fact, the people promoting it said, don't look at what they say in Arabic. It will 
it will um, uh, denigrate the peace process. Don't let people know too much. Yeah. And that was under Clinton in 1993, the Oslo Accords, which failed. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's been. And I, I, was, I, was at, I was at the Nobel Peace Prize ceremony. Oh, wow. Where our, which was, which was like, I, uh, something, since I grew up with the Tom Blair songs about uh, satire, after, after Yasser Arafat got the, peace, got the Nobel Peace Prize, there's nothing to make fun of anymore. <laughs> right. But I asked Arafat a, a question at, the, at, his, at his ceremony. They had only had a few people asking questions, and the Norwegians didn't know any better but to ask me to ask a question. But Arafa, so first I asked Rabin in Paris, the heads of Israel, will, does, does Arafat disorder the peace, the peace prize? Will he cancel the covenant that we discussed? Will he fight Hamas? So I asked Arafat that question. And Arafat said, I don't understand your question. Hamas are our brothers. Right. We do not do anything to harm them. And then as he lay, he wouldn't ask the answer the covenant, so I stood in my gargantuan way in the door, and I blocked his way out. So what about the covenant? He says, they, uh, they won't let me come cap cancel. Now, Pastor Ryan knows my secret. I happen to, I happen to be stand five foot one. I wasn't going to tell him. I that I stood six foot eight. <laughs> awesome. That's, so, cool. that's an official custom. But my wife cut me down the side. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. that's a wiser for so. <laughs> Marriage is this one is for you. It doesn't Any other questions <laughs> that you can? Maybe some of the people here would like to Absolutely, ask yeah. a question. A anybody yeah. have a question? Or? Yeah, yeah. I see someone there. Yeah. Someone in the blue shirt. Yeah, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here. David. Just tell me just tell me who you are. Thank you. Yeah, I'm you know Master Bybee. Remember we met at the Olive Tree Hotel? Oh, how are you? <laughs> Real good. Things are going well. You know, I've read a lot of things from rabbis about the two-state two solution. It will never work. There's no way it would ever work. Uh, of course, I lived there in Israel for some time. Uh, we talked about that, if you remember. What do you think about right. Catherine Glick's um, book on the one-state solution? Well, Caroline Glick, Caroline Glick is a wonderful Carol, person. Yeah, excuse me. A wonderful person, and uh, she knows what she's talking about. Because if Israel doesn't control the situation, then we're going to have a, a mess. And that's what we've been saying all along. If you have a, you know, some people say, we can't control other people's lives. Yes, we can. Excuse me. When you have a school system, when the other side puts in a school system, and we said this 20 years ago, 28 years ago, that if they put in their own school system, it will be just to train them to, to, for war. And people said we were nuts. Well, we were nuts. But we were correct. So Caroline Glick is a brilliant young lady and uh, one of the one of the valorous women of the of the people of Israel. It's nice to hear. Yeah, she's fantastic. Yeah. Anybody else? Oh, come on. I've got about 50 people in this room. They all have a question well, being shot. They're, they're frustrated because they want to throw a tomato at me and they can't do it by uh, Oh, no, you're, you're popular here. What, what I tell you, I usually have like 20 people in my class. They love you. Come on. Uh, you're popular here. Uh, you love your tomatoes. By the way, uh, the way our office does our work, we're, we're now translating. 70 more books, and we've hired a team to do it. We raised money to do that. What are these books? There's bo they're books that are teacher's manuals, teaching the teachers how to teach. Now, Dalala Mukherjee, who I showed you a few minutes ago, uh, she is features in four of the books, but in the teacher's manuals, she features eight times, so that the children, so the teachers will know how to emphasize the importance of of, of teaching someone, of, of, of bringing someone who has murdered Jews to the fore. And remember, keep this picture in mind as a role model. So right now, we're raising money to translate 70 new books and put out a, a feature film called Jihad in Jerusalem. And we do not take money from, from governments or from organizations, but from individuals. So on your site, is on behind the news that that, that got, there's a, point, a place where you click and you can you see how you can help yeah, us. The, the donate button. This yeah. is grassroots. Right. Because we're not going to depend on anyone but the people who understand the integrity of what we're talking about. Right. And I'll tell you something. It's tough, but it's worth the price. To be independent, you can do what you want. If you're dependent on someone, they say, well, you have to wait till you be politically correct. That's the expression I use these days. Well, we have to get this word out. It's a big, big challenge. 
the amount of people who call us, I, I sent out 9,000 letters to churches and synagogues around the world to offer to speak. I got four responses and I'm going to four, four places to speak. Now, I'm telling you the real story. Most people say, Eli, I've got two churches and two synagogues that have invited us. Isn't that wonderful? I didn't mention it. 9,200 donors. But that's okay. That's, that's part of it. It's an uphill battle. Yeah. But when, Kate, when David was facing Goliath, he needed a few pebbles. That's yeah. what I need. So if we send you five so, pebbles, you'll be good then. I don't know where, where can you cash pebbles in these <laughs> Right, <but> yeah. <laughs> Listen, yeah, we have, we have some nice ones in Havasu, so. So, um, yeah, so and where are you going to be? Are you going to be East Coast, or? Actually, the two synagogues, one, one synagogue in Toronto, one synagogue in Washington, and two synagogues in England. Okay, one of these days we're going to get you here in person. Your son's been here four or five times. Yeah, with, the, right. with the D and the baby and everything. Yeah. Does someone else have a question? Oh, yeah. Alan, why don't you, why don't you come up I, here so we can... Well, just really, my question just is... Speak up. Yeah. You might be able to my hear. question is, who funds the textbooks for the Palestinians? Great question. Now, very important. There are 67 nations that fund the, 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 the textbooks with the Palestinian Authority. One of the most important nations funding the textbooks was the United States government huh. until January, until last January. Uh, we were able to get the textbooks directly to President Trump, and President Trump blew a gasket when he saw what was in there, and President Trump gave, gave an executive order to stop the funding to UNRWA and the school books of the Palestinian Authority. He knows what's going on. Now, when you write to Sarah Sanders, and please do, you're not writing to someone who doesn't know because her father, Mike Huckabee, has seen this material. So it's not that they don't know about it. And what's important is, because the President knows about it, but he also knows that when the United States pulled back, Germany and the UK came in and started Saudi Arabia. So, the, so the, he knows that the, even though his cutback did not affect anyone, there is now I know that, that um, the brand of Christianity that, that I'm talking to will not necessarily understand, uh, in a sense appreciate what I'm about to tell you. But the person, the first cleric. That came out to come out against the school books was the Pope John Paul's II's um, representative in Israel. The Pope oh, Nuncio, whose name is Archbishop, was Archbishop uh, Pietro Sambi. Oh, wow. He saw the books because we brought it to him and he brought it to Rome the next day. And Pope John Paul II demanded that Italy pull all of its money out of the Palestinian Authority school system. And when, Very important. When was that, David? It was a, a great moment of integrity. When was that? Uh, so, uh, when was that? When did that happen? That, that happened on August 1st, 2000. Okay. When the school books came first came out, we met with the Palestinian Minister of Education, and the next day, uh, the the um, Papal Annuncio, Archbishop Sambi, called me and asked if I would bring him the school books. And we did. <clears throat> and at the time, the, the uh, I said an extra cop, an extra set, because at the time, the Israel Foreign Ministry didn't want to look at them. Right. And uh, they became headlines that the Pope worked with us on this issue. Now I said to him, well, we have something in common because we both wear kibbutz. <laughs> so it's okay. I like yours better. We understood one another very, very well. And uh, Archbishop Sambi unfortunately passed away in 2011, a week before he was going to appear with me in Washington in a joint press conference oh, on the subject of the, 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 the disaster and the hate. The, it's the, by the way, it's not hatred. It's the call to violence. I, that when you look at our, at, at our films, you will not see hatred. You'll see much worse. Children trained to be automatic pistols in fighting and killing Jews. Yeah, five years. Look at that, and then look at that. The films were put out by William Shirer, which we're going to have on our website tomorrow night, by the way. Yeah. William Shirer wrote the book, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. And he got a hold of, of the captured Nazi films of children being, and that Nazi children being trained for war. On, on the Palestinian Arab school, school children and the Nazi school children, you don't see hatred, you just see determination to kill. And that's what it is. So it's not a hate education, it's a kill murder education. Now, it's very hard for us to get this through because there's a whole, how shall I say, I'm sure that some of you know about the dangers of public relations. Uh, and um, the, the, the public relations, the spin, is that the Palestinian Authority wants peace. Now, it just happens that UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency and the PA have hired Hillary Clinton's former campaign director to manage 
their misinformation. Is that true? Oh, wow. Hadn't heard that. Absolutely. That's oh. not who well known. Oh, Bill okay. Stein, Marathon, Marathon Strategies, hired by I know the name. Israel's enemies to promote them as the best thing since uh, Hornflex. Wow. Um, and then it reminds me of my father's best friend, who worked for Reynolds, um, R.J. Reynolds, promoting cigarettes. You know, Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. <laughs> I'd walk a mile for a camel. And we lived in a model of a summer in Philadelphia, and he lived in a beautiful place in Malibu. Mm. And uh, my father said, how many people did you kill this week with your cigarettes? And uh, he said, well, you, you, you're living in a poor house in Philadelphia. I'm in Malibu. My father was an engineer. He said, did you have insurance? No. And his, his house fell into the Pacific. <laughs> my, father, <laughs> my father had no tactic. He said, tact. He says, and how many people did you kill with your cigarettes? to lose your house in the Pacific Ocean. Wow. wow. And that's why, so we have people who, who know how to sell cigarettes who are promoting the PLO and the UNRWA and the other side, and they know how to, they know how to do that. Wow. They have the spin, we have the truth. Yeah, now, which all might end up being a moot point. Yeah, go ahead and clap. Yeah, here you guys clap. Wow. So, um, so in a few weeks, uh, Trump and Kushner unveil their peace plan. Um, I'm getting the feeling from what I'm reading that Netanyahu is is probably in full agreement with. I mean, part of it is that like Netanyahu here's the story: Netanyahu is crushed by the American government the same way that President Reagan in 19 President Reagan 1988 recognized the PLO, which was illegal and still is illegal. Yeah, the Reagan plan. Right. Right. Yeah, right. I asked a very wonderful fellow who was Reagan's advisor, Dr. Alan Keyes, who you should have in your church, an amazing guy. And Dr. Keyes, I asked him a year later, why did President Reagan do it? He said, the Saudis, the Saudi owners walked into the White House without an appointment, walked into the room and said, oh, all of us, you give Arafat, the West Bank and Gaza now, that's his playground, we have leave us alone. He was afraid the BLO would, would overthrow Saudi Arabia. And that's more or less what happens. The Saudis, who still control the, a good portion of the economy of the world, they dictate to the Americans and to Israel what has to happen. You know, it's, it's so, funny you say that because I, it, I was going to ask you about that because I've noticed in, in my research on the, on the treaty, the peace plan coming up, that I keep seeing Saudi Arabia come up in these articles, and I, I, just, I wasn't quite getting the angle, but I, I can see it. They, they, in fact, uh, part of what they want to get their hands on is um, even the Temple Mount that they're negotiating to be involved with, with uh... The Saudis are in a state of war with Israel. Jordan and Egypt signed peace treaties. Syria and Lebanon signed armistice agreements. Saudis signed nothing. The Saudis are at war with Israel, but they do it with a big smile and a big check. So what the Saudis are doing, and some idiot writing, a third, uh, who am I to express an opinion, right? <laughs> but some idiot wrote in one of the one of the um, media columns yesterday, uh, Jewish media column, that the Saudis are the heroes of the pre-peace process. The Saudis are the fun, main funders today of the Palestinian Authority school system. The main funders. Wow. Yeah. And the school system has gotten worse in the last three years. It used to encourage children to make war against Israel. No, no, it's just against the Zionist entity because Israel doesn't exist. Right. As it used to say, well, get rid of the Jews from the West Bank. No, get rid of the Jews everywhere. They call them the Zionist presence. And this is funded by Saudi Arabia, but Saudi Arabia has marvelous PR people to cover that up. The yeah. peace process, and I don't know if you know, a, a New York Times correspondent named Thomas L. Friedman. Yeah. The L stands for lie. <laughs> Thomas L. Friedman is the person who brought the Saudi peace plan to the public. He just forgot to mention that the Saudi peace plan is based on what we call the, the um, uh, the right of return, the right of, of Jews to go back, Arabs to go back to where they came from in '48. Right. You know, the New York Times has a simply, it should be called "All the News That Fits." We print. Mm -hmm. And Thomas Y. Friedman put this out, out and convinced everyone that there was a peace process, peace plan, which didn't, didn't exist. When I when I asked, I tried to ask Friedman at a press conference, I said, "For you, I don't want to have questions." Well, that's the way it is. Yeah. That's why I have to go around it. My grandfather was very angry at the New York Times in the 30s for downplaying the mass murder of Jews. And he said, Times is semi spelled backwards. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's what my grandfather ate with. Wow. 
Very proudly, he was the commander of the American Legion in New York. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And he stood up against the Nazi presence in New York in the 30s. And they were strong. No one wanted to listen. Yeah, he was strong there. It was my so, grandfather who came to, in, the, in the cleanup operation after World War I, and he was helping all kinds of, of American soldiers who had been gassed by the Germans. He was so upset that the Germans weren't forced to surrender just an armistice, just a ceasefire. Yeah, treat See the problem with ceasefires? We cease, they fire. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, David, so, so um, President Trump, I doubt that you've picked up on this over there, but he, he kind of likes to get his own way. Have you picked up on this? or <laughs> like when he, he likes to get his own way, like when he wants to do no, something. No, we have to say this is your way. President Bush, President Bush. <laughs> President, 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 we like President that too. Biden, I want to be around the bush, see. <laughs> yeah. President Trump, you have seen the school books. You know what's going on. You're a man of integrity. For you to, and he's hired his, his Jewish advisors who want to be nice and friendly. We don't want anyone to be nice and friendly. When you see school books, which call for the extermination of the Jews, yeah. and you don't relate to it, you're missing the vote. Let me, so if pres yeah. President Trump wants to be President Trump, and not one of these other characters, Bush, Clinton, Hillary, whatever. Obama. He should stand up for the values and principles he believes in. Hey, you know that prize they gave to Yasser Arafat, the Nobel Peace Prize, they gave one to Obama, too. So, go figure. <laughs> well, what can I tell you? The, these people with lack of integrity, you know, the, the, all the people who oppose uh, President um, Trump, the Bush people and the Trump people, and, and not, not the, the Bush people and the Clinton people, the, the, and a number of other politically correct people, these are the people who also promoted the PLO. That's a peace partner. Absolutely. And so, uh, when I tried to show films of uh, what Arafat was saying in one of the peace conferences that that, uh, that Clinton organized, I was picked up by security and moved out. That's it. They just wow. picked up. Yeah. Trying to deny people the basics of what's going on. You can have a, you can have a seminar at your church and show all their films. We've been making films so people will see what's going on. Oh, yeah, the films are amazing. In the, in the 90s, we made films of Arafat. Now we make films of the schools. Yeah. But this is very important to understand that this is, they give a consistent message. Right. And the same people who are the same kind of people who, who block people from knowing that cigarette smoking can kill you, they also block people from knowing that what the toilet process has done, the Oslo process. Oslo Accord, yeah. Hey, oh, hey. another question? Oh, yeah. Not that I have any questions. <laughs> I had another question, uh, David. Uh, a few years back when I was in Israel, I took a taxi up to Ami Rim, and uh, you know Ami Rim, the wonderful uh, kosher village up there. And uh, anyway, uh, I went with a, uh, a Palestinian driver, uh, Naji, and he eventually, because I got to know him, he invited me to his house to uh, have dinner. And when I went there, we eventually went. He kept begging us, and we went, my wife and I, and we noticed his children. He was friendly, and I had talked to him in my position of supporting Israel. I talked to him about many things. I talked to him about forgiveness, lots of things. And, uh, uh, but I, we went to his house for Ramadan, and I noticed his children were very, they, they stood back quite a ways. But then we noticed they were watching cartoons that mm -hmm. were killing people. They were shooting, had guns shooting Jewish people. And they were very suspicious of us. They stayed at a distance. And I'm just wondering, you know, certainly the textbooks is a high, high, high priority, number one. But what about these cartoons? Are you familiar? I'm sure you're familiar yeah, well, with I, 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 First of all, we had the opportunity 20 years ago to produce translations of those cartoons and present them in the United States Senate for people to see. I'll give you another story. I work with Arab camera people who do a wonderful work for us. So again, 20 years ago, when I came to pick up the school books in the Palestinian Ministry of Education, uh, my cameraman received me in his home, nice cookies, kosher cookies, because that's what they gave me. It was very nice. And his child who was just beginning first grade the same day that my daughter was beginning first grade. He was walking around his house singing songs about Ibah el Yehud, how we're going to kill the Jews. Five different versions. So I, I was very, very concerned, you know, this little boy, six years old, singing songs about killing the Jews. And my cameraman said, he doesn't mean you. 
Oh yeah. Of course. Uh, all I said was, I think the line from 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 the vaudeville. What am I, chopped liver? He didn't understand the chopped liver. But I explained to him that you, uh, who I've had a wonderful relationship with, it's okay. But that your child, we're going to be fighting him, and he's going to be fighting us to kill us. He says, no, it's not real. Yeah, don't take it personal. The war right now being fought against Israel is being run by children. Mm -hmm. And uh, what my guys <laughs> have said is that that's exactly what we're dealing with. The next generation has been poisoned has been poisoned, and as we see more casualties. I'll tell you a funny, funny story. I mentioned about William Sharper's film for the Nazi children. I showed them to my uncle, Michael Stanley Levy, who was, the, who was an officer in the counterintelligence corps in the, um, in the American army in, the, in the Germany in the early 50s. And he said, my God, I recognize these children. He interviewed them. They were, they were Nazi kids who he was trying to pull out of the, the Nazi ideology and change the schools. The first thing you have to do in a peace process is to change the schools, change the education. Yeah, they changed it much worse. <laughs> so all I can say is that your insight that you had with your taxi driver and his child was exactly on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when they had these, these uh, films where they show young young Palestinian women being raped by, by uh, Supposed Israeli soldiers is actually Arab actors wearing Israeli army uniforms in their Palestine Broadcast Corporation films. This is what influenced them. They have been convinced that the Jews are monsters and that their whole ideology is based on the idea of right and return to the homes they left in 48. I notice that it's a little bit beyond 1948, but it doesn't matter. The children are infused with the idea that the Israelis came to murder their grandfathers and rape their grandmothers. And every morning in their schools, they start with a song, we're going to fight the Zionists who came to rape our grandmothers and, and murder our grandfathers. And that has a big effect on the children. That's their yeah. education. Hey, and Dave. the fact that the Trump plan doesn't bring <coughs> education should shock every one of you. Yeah. Now, I can't get in front of thousands of people because thousands of people won't have us, including some of the big churches, who want to be politically correct and don't want to alienate the president. Oh, yeah. So I don't think you care about alienated or not alienated. I think all of you, people who are here tonight, want to get the truth out yeah, about what's truth. going on. Amen. That's why I'm encouraging the 20 of you here, that each one of you would write Sarah Sanders Huckabee. Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Press Secretary, White House, Washington, D.C., 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, if that hasn't changed, uh, ever since the British were of the White House, I think that's been the address. Yes. You write 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in envelope, and you also can follow it up on the email. You'll see the email for the very easy to find on the uh, on the web. Yeah, wh White House. The press office of the uh, White House. And yeah. we understand you are, Sarah, you are a person of principle. Near president is. We have more baths to stand, do this and stand up. Asking heads of organizations, Christian or Jewish organizations, to do anything, forget about it. No one wants to. No one wants to stand up against the uh, to against the the, the tide. Yeah. We have to swim we, against the tide. We have we to do. swim against the That's tide. That's what we do here. So, hey, David, uh, we're getting toward the end of our uh, time here. Um, can I throw you a curveball? I'm going to ask you a hard question. You love those. Yes. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> He's, he doesn't answer yet. He's a smart guy. So. Um, if, if uh, Trump and Kushner modified this peace plan to address this issue of the textbooks and propaganda, and that's illegal now, um, would you be okay with this peace plan that they're introducing? No, but, uh, but that's, uh, that, that, first things first, it leaves the PLO in power. The leopard is not changing it its spots. Yeah. Yeah. It leaves UNRWA in power. Yes. One row whose purpose is to prepare five million people to take back homes from 48. But it's the first step. Let's do one step at a time. Let's do our own two-stage solution. One thing at a time. Let's do it the easy stuff. But the easy stuff is to ask for this to happen. But leaving the PLO in power and signing anything with the PLO, why do you have to make the, the, the same mistake twice? Yeah. You understand what the PLO is. Yeah, they, there's, there's, you know, uh, Kushner again has said, you know, we're not using the term two-state two solution, but clearly that's what it is. They're calling it New Palestine. Uh, there will well, be a, okay. there will be a Palestinian state. 
they're saying they're saying we we're not we're not, we we definitely won't divide Jerusalem, and then they're saying that Jerusalem will be the capital of uh, New great Palestine rabbi, too. Say you can fool some of the people some of the time, not all of the people. <laughs> yeah, great, great, great rabbi, Sorry. yes. Uh, Abraham Abraham Lincoln Abraham, Abraham Lee Cohen, but anyway, <laughs> uh, awesome. but you gotta understand that we can't be fooled here. We're we're adults. We can't be fooled. We have to see exactly what's going on and what we're fighting. And the Islamic presence, and not all Muslims are against us. We published a piece about the Quranic recognition, recognition of the land of Israel as, as, as God's gift to the Jewish people. Amen. That is in the Quran. <clears throat> but not all Muslims, certainly not the Muslims of Saudi Arabia, ascribe to that view. Right. And they have a very clear understanding of what they want to do, and they don't hide it. Yeah. What they say in Arabic, what they say to their own people. Yeah. Well, you, you know that everyone here, um, we are all on God's side, which means that we're on Israel's side, which means that we're on your side. Right. You're our brother, and we love you, and you have our support. So. Well, re remember, the power of the pen. <laughs> right. The power and the stamp. Of the pen. Yeah. When the pen is used, it's a weapon. They're using education as a weapon. I'm asking you to use the pen as a weapon. I'm telling you, you don't know the power that you have in a democracy which allows people to use the pen. And I can tell you, I mean, there's a whole generation, we have an ex exhibit at, at, at Beta Room where I work of typewriters. People don't know what a typewriter is either. People don't know what envelopes, but people feel dis disenfranchised. I'm saying, how we used to, in the 60s, there was an idea of power to the people. I have power to the people here. I'm empowering every one of you to stand up for integrity and to demand of the U.S. president that he not issue any, that, 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 that issue any edict, that Arthur Harris not take the ring off his finger until certain <laughs> things are happening. Yeah. He can't. He, uh, president Trump made it to the top of business because he did not cut corners. He understood that. So does, does anyone have any other um, questions or comments for David before we uh, wrap this up? I, I would just say one thing. I, I, I don't know if you, you would uh, uh, confirm this also, but I would advise people, I was always looking, what's the path to go? Because, you know, I was, in the, I was involved in the 73 war. I lived there in Amirin. Uh, what path should we go? And, and I know that Jewish people want peace. And this is why I think I, I would advise people to read the uh, uh, Carolyn Glick. What do you think? I think she has some very good. We do not. I, let me be. Let me add to that. We don't. What we want is victory, not peace. Right. Yeah. Right. People say, why don't you issue a uh, a Marshall Plan for the other side? Well, if you give economic assistance when the other side is at peace, is at war with you, you don't. You haven't accomplished anything. Uh -huh. We have to. We have to defeat the other side. Does yeah. anyone know? Remember what surrender means? A mm -hmm. white flag. White flag. Sorry to be. Uh, extreme, but the Arab League made war in 1948 and has not withdrawn that war. The key element of the Arab League is Saudi Arabia. They haven't canceled their state of war with Israel. I sent a Christian journalist to the Saudi Arabian embassy to ask questions. Have you? Will, will you cancel your? Will you cancel your your declaration of war? No, no answer. Will you, uh, and that is, will you stop the, your, your support for the boycott of Israel? No answer. Will you withdraw your support for Middle East studies programs around the United States, which preach the idea that Zionism should, should, should be defeated? No answer. So understand, the Soviets are doing some business with Jews now, but I'm sorry, we cannot be what? Oh yeah, there's, a, there's an old saying. See, there's a gentleman who wants to ask another question here. Oh, was there another question here? Oh yeah, uh, this is Mark. Yeah, in Genesis it says, those who will bless Israel will be blessed, and those that curse Israel will be cursed. Any two-state solution, that if it's supported by Trump, will be cursed. That's right. Because this, that, it, so if you want to know where America's gonna, gonna be down the road, look at this peace treaty. They divide the land, God's gonna divide America. Yeah. We're already divided. But it's I want to tell you, when you write to President Trump, through Sarah Sanders, say that the Arabs do not want a two-state solution, they want a two-state solution, and they don't hide it. 
Right. We ask you, President Trump, and the American people to support that neighborhood. I thank you. What's the name of the gentleman who just asked the question? Mark. 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 Mark, thank you. Sure. Yeah. But very, very important. And Mark, I hope that it's good that you're telling it in church, but tell it to the people. Tell it to the people in power and make sure that you help, help us in our effort to get the word out. Because yeah. nobody weren't allowed to speak at APEC. We weren't allowed to speak many many places. We're blocked. But because so many people hate us, we know we must be doing the right thing. Yeah, That's right. right. Yeah, no kidding. We've written Sarah. Yeah, uh, yeah, Kim and Mark have actually written to um, written Sarah, Sarah Huckabee. We've written Mark so, McSally, we've written Bill Sarr. Yeah. We're going to Romney next. Romney. Yeah. We're going to Romney next. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Mark, well, Mark sure. Now, started, yeah. The, the next question is, did you call Sarah and ask for a response to your letters? Whenever you, I teach, I teach investigative journalism in the summer, and I get bright students from around the world. And when I say to them, when you write a letter, even if it's to an important person, you call and say, did you get the letter? And you have to do that. I'm sorry to be um, pedantic with you, but it's not enough to write the letter. You got to say, did you get the letter? And do you have a response? Okay. And you call three, four, five times until you be in a very nice and polite way, but you have to be, have the tenacity to do that. Very important. Sense, because uh, they may not think you're serious, but in the same way, when you're pursuing something so vital that you want to make sure that the message gets through. Amen. Short short and sweet letters will do it. I'm trying to tell you, I have no idea how much influence you have. By the way, the last time I <coughs> appeared at this, uh, this um, seminar, three people sent contributions of more than $1,000. Yeah, our class. So our I want class. to tell you, yeah. it was appreciated. And all I can say is, we're way over our heads in debt, but that's okay. Uh, the Lord yeah, will right. provide, the people will provide. Yeah. Remember, we're, we're, our model is King David. He beat Goliath, who was the epitome of Amalek. He did it with his integrity. And one of the aspects of Amalek is the denunciation of the God of Israel. And that's, that's what really got David set more than anything else. Right. And the fact that the the, the denunciation of the God of Israel by the PLO is part of the story. Yeah. And the fact that, that Abbas, their current leader, actually put out a book saying that the people who wiped out the Jews in World War II were the Zionists working with the Nazis. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we know that the, the number one bestseller in the Palestinian territories is Mein Kampf. So we know that they go along with the Nazis. Oh, that's, that's God, part God, of God, help, God help them. And that's, hey, David, we need to wrap this up. It's always so great. I always hate to cut it off at the end. I love talking to you. I'm going to come and have Shabbat dinner with you pretty soon, okay? That's right. Well, we're looking forward. Now, now Noah, my son, has two, two, two boys. I know, two babies, yeah. We, we now have oh, nine yeah. grandchildren. Yeah. And uh, so we, we met that's, like, our, we met that's like, our job is to replenish the earth with Jewish people. Yeah. And uh, we, we, have lot, we, have, we have a lot to do. And when I came to Israel, there were three million people. Now there's nine million people. And um, So you're doing your part. Better. You're contributing. Better, better people grow. <laughs> yes, amen. Hey, we're going to take up a uh, donation for you. And so um, everybody, I'm going to pass around the bucket. And uh, again, 100% of this goes to David's organization. And the, when, this, when, you go, when you go into our website, you'll see a uh, box. You push it and it's a, it's in a credit card, a carrier pigeon, whatever. It'll yeah, be payment works. I do every month. Um, just make out your checks to Living Word Family Church, and we'll make sure that 100% of it, again, you can get cash also. Uh, it's going to any of you have any other churches I'm going to start this, so. or, or, Please make sure or we groups, that. we've also appeared at Rotary Clubs. This, this, this does not require airfare <coughs> me or my staff to in, in front of you. Well, don't tell I'm Noam that because we love to see him. So Noam always comes in person. So. By the way, I've appeared on, the, on Skype with my entire staff, Arabs and Jews who work with us. But this, I, this is upgraded Skype. Everyone can, can appear. Any group that you think would be appropriate, also encourage me uh, for, even for a, a living room group. Uh, yeah. We're happy to do this. This is good. This is fine. Uh, it's not an inconvenience. The time of the day is crazy, but how can you sleep? <laughs> you know, how can you sleep when, when you have this kind of threat? And you look great, man. You're wearing a tie, yeah. and I'm so impressed. It's five in the morning there. You're wearing a tie and a kippa. Five, five, four, five fourteen. Five fourteen. Yeah, right. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to let you go. So go watch the sunrise over the Judean desert. It's beautiful, right? Um, I'm sure you see it every day. I don't think you ever sleep. Like you're writing uh, to me at all hours of the night, you know? You're not. You shall never sleep. Or the, 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 
The watchman over Israel will never sleep and never slumber. He's, he's yeah, it's always scripture with this guy. Yeah, I love it. Very good. We feel very strong. Right. And as a journalist, I've interviewed more than 50 people whose loved ones have been murdered. And by the way, the murders that they perform that the Palestinian Authority, whenever someone is murdered, there's a new ordinance in the Palestinian Authority that anyone who, get, who murders a Jew will be given an automatic and automatic gratuity yeah. for life, and so will his family. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, this is, there is no, again, emphasize this to, to, to the president. This is the first time in history that there's been a financial award provided for people who murdered Jews. Oh, yeah. It's big one on the line. So understand, that's an <coughs> incentive. I have no reason to sleep when that's happening and people aren't paying attention. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure as many people as possible know, know, know about this, and whenever you see someone write in the newspaper or anywhere that the intentions of the PLO, the Palestinian Authority, is are for peace, yeah. mention it. It's on my website. We got a hold of the actual document, the ordinance. Yeah. And if they say two state solution, you respond by the saying they want a two state solution. Right. You could do it fast, but understand that this, they, they do not mince words. Yeah. And the people who fire those missiles. Killing four people this week have already been awarded. Yeah. When we go to a funeral, someone murdered by by the by the by the Arabs here, by that same day, the, the, the allegations have been made automatically. Understand what we're up against. Yeah. Hey, David. It's, it's and the fact that people want to deny it, they can be in denial. Yeah. David. You know, Cleopatra, you know what Cleopatra Cleopatra syndrome is? She was the queen of denial. <laughs> That's a Think about yeah, that's anyway, hey, um, we don't make innocent, in, in every, one of the ways we stay sane in Israel is by having a sense of humor, because we say God has a sense of humor to put all of our, all this together. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Hey, do you mind if we uh, pray with you before we say lahitrot? P-R-A-Y or P-R-E-Y? No, it's an M. It's an M. <laughs> no, we're the good guys. We're the ones who support you, don't worry. So, yeah. Hey, I'm sure. by the way, I, I think I saw you waving to Sarah. Please tell her I said shalom. Well, and she's, a, she's not up yet, and she, her door is, is, is very very carefully locked downstairs. And then hopefully, and she has stuff on her ears so she won't hear Okay, her. okay. I saw you waving to somebody. Yeah, yeah. Which, which daughter? Yes. I forgot which one lives What's with that? you. Which, which daughter? I've met them all, but. Well, we, we, the one who walked in while we were talking, that was. Uchama. Okay. And, uh, she she um came back from Independence Day for a, a celebration with her friends. Our children are from 19 to 30, almost 37. Yeah. Is is today Yom Hatzmaut? Yes. Oh yes, it is. I knew that. Okay. Speaking to you on Israel Independence Day. Yes. Awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. This is is Israel's Independence Day today. Yeah. 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 So Pag Sameach. Yeah. I was I was there one year for that. Fantastic celebration. We went up to Mount uh, Theodore, saw the fireworks show. Oh my gosh, a lot of people. Anyways, I'm gonna pray. I have to dismiss these people. I'm already way over time. So. P R A Y. P R A Y. I promise. Here we go. <laughs> Father God, we just thank you for tonight, Lord. We just thank you for um, your presence here tonight. We thank you for the gift of, uh, of your holy word, Father God. We thank you for our friend David and our friends, uh, the Jewish people, the nation of Israel. We proclaim boldly that we love Israel. We love our, our brothers and sisters, the Jewish people. Uh, we, we're all your covenant people, Father God. And Father, I just uh, thank you for anointing each one in this room to have a heart for uh, David and his family and his neighbors, the nation of Israel. I thank you for anointing each one of us here just to boldly and strongly stand up in the name of righteousness and truth and support the nation of Israel against this, this whole dark world that's coming against it. We thank you for our president, President Trump, uh, his son, Jared Kushner. Uh, we pray for wisdom over them in this situation with this uh, peace treaty coming up. I just thank you for um, uh, encouraging the hearts of those in this room to, to do what David is asking, to write those letters to uh, Sarah Huckabee, to our uh, senators, our representatives, uh, to the White House. And uh, Father, I just uh, pray for a special blessing over David uh, for uh, meeting with us this, this evening or morning over where he is. Um, just uh, bless him over abundantly, bless his family. And uh, we pray all these things in the name of that wonderful Rabbi Yeshua, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Love you, my friend. All right, so, so like I said,
so you can watch the sunrise. It's to the east, okay? All right. God bless you, David. We'll talk soon, okay? Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Get, get off the, the certain part of your anatomy and do what needs to be done. <laughs> thank you. Good, good final word. Amen. Okay. Mahitro. Shalom. Shalom.